Hey there guys, this is Robin Hood and Superman Guy back here, and today we have the first round from the semifinals of the Napoleon Total War subscriber tournament. So, Zuper, what's going on in this one? Uh, today we've got H. Sonbol playing as Prussia, and across the field, BP-97 as Russia. And today and, uh, they are playing on the Galician Ria? That's the one. D didn't you say that's how it's pronounced? Yeah, it's a soft C. Okay, yeah, I've always called it Golikin Rhea, and uh, that's just because yeah, anyone who watches my channel will know that while I can accurately commentate the tactics of a battle, pronouncing uh, whatever these games throw at me is, is a rare sight. Classic Robin Hood. Yeah, anyways, very different deployments at the start of this. Yeah, H. Sambul made sure to cluster on his uh, in the left corner of his deployment and rushed straight for the hill. Yeah, and he, at this point, is clearly going to secure that. And uh, BP-97 has a small contingent facing him, but he's spread out into basically like three completely different wings of his army. Yeah, BP-97 appears to be playing a 3v3 against one player. Yeah, <laughs> that is a brilliant way of putting that. Anyways... Let's go ahead and read off these armies before anyone starts dying. So, do you want to go ahead and cover Prussia? Alrighty, uh, I guess starting from the top of the hill, yep. Prussia made sure to take it with three separate units of cavalry. There's one of Hussars, one of Lutzow's Free Corps, and another of Lancers. And uh, now the infantry's hitting up there. We've got a few units of Prussian Fusiliers. I can't tell exactly how many. I believe he has five total from my count earlier. And then, uh... Another bunch of musketeers. Once again, I see three, but I imagine there are a few more behind. I think five total. Yeah, that sounds about right. With the uh, foot guards, I think he has. With a, with a separate unit, or two units of foot guards. And then uh, bringing up the rear, we've got another unit of lancers and one of the Brandenburg Uhlans. And then, and then uh, standard Jan general staff. Yep, and, the and uh, no, thing. he also brought a uh, horse cavalry. Oh, Six horse pounders. artillery. Yeah. yeah. Or, yeah, excuse me. Horse cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> and there they are setting up on the hill, and they're going to start opening fire here soon. So I'm going to go ahead and look over Russia here on this far right of the Russian uh, army. We've got a 17th Jaeger Regiment, three Oposheni, and uh, there those guys are. Two cavalry units. We've got a Karasier and a Dragoon, which just got shot by that artillery watch some guys go flying there so nice hit to open up the battle then in the center we've got three russian jaeger units and a lot of infantry uh this is the largest portion of his army it looks like i see four or three musketeers and a moscow musketeer and then uh what's this hiding in the woods his standard general staff hiding behind this building and I actually think he set them up like that to avoid them from artillery. Like, they are literally hiding directly behind the building in a straight line. Anyways, on his far left is a six-pounder horse artillery, a uh, two lifeguard of foot, and a fourth Russian Jaeger unit. And then for the cavalry, another dragoon and a cuirassier. So that covers the entire Russian army there. Alright, so what do you think BP was really trying to do with that deployment? I th I actually don't know. Uh, a guess would be that he was trying to kind of prepare for all situations, which uh -huh. I don't necessarily know is uh, that big of a deal, considering you can always move your army as a group. But before I continue on that, check out this building. Yeah, that house is taking some damage damage and there are two full units of Opel Shani in here and there they go 100% dead two full units just taken from the battlefield uh, by that artillery unit up on the hill I liked how the men in the yard died yeah that's just mass stroke <laughs> they just fell over dead yes but uh, that adds a nice visual touch to the battlefield giant burning building but anyways, yeah, I think he might have been preparing for all situations. Uh, the only reason that I hesitate to think that that's actually the case is because you can notice his his 
army is not making any move to rejoin. Um, you know, his far left wing is setting up over here. His his artillery actually unlimbered momentarily on this hill. But at this point, the entire Prussian force is up on this main hill. And he's not bringing over all of his troops to fight it. He might be hoping that the Prussians will move down off the hill and he can lure them over that way. Uh, but anyways, at this point, they seem to be realizing... Yeah, we've got this hill, and it looks like he's setting up to start pushing down off of it once he realizes uh, this is not going to be attacked. And uh, the Russian numbers where he's pushing off are not going to be able to hold off no, the entirety of the Prussian army. We've got one Opal Sheni unit, and in the trees, uh, where are they? That Karasier and the Dragoon. And that's all that's directly in front of the Prussian line here. Uh, moving up is one more unit of Opel Shenny, and the Russian Jaegers are starting to, to move over. So it looks like the first shots here are being fired as we speak, actually. These Prussian Fusilier are firing into this Opel Shenny unit. And these guys are moving forward. Um... Now they are returning fire. I don't necessarily know. You can see there's a musketeer moving down onto their flank. I don't know how smart of a decision it is to engage right now with these two Opel Shenny units because unless he's just trying to like hold for a moment, I, I don't know what, what the goal is here. But you can see that one unit got shredded and this other one's not going to fare much better. They're just going up against far more units on their own. And uh, superior units, largely at that. At least there are a number of skir skirmishers, as well as musketeers facing off against each separate unit. Yeah, and it seems that that Russian cavalry is now becoming engaged. And uh, I would think that that's coming too late. Yep, we've got a Brandenburg Ulan charge in the center, getting into these Russian Jaegers here as well. And that was a successful charge. Uh, they are going to start being shot by these musketeers slightly behind the Jaegers, though, so that actually probably will take out those Brandenburg Ulans pretty quickly, as you can see. And over on this flank, the Russian cavalry actually got phenomenal charges here. Uh, they got countercharged by a Lancer, but they've already rounded one unit of musketeers, and this other unit looks like, morale-wise, it is starting to break, and there it goes. So uh, Russia actually doing a little bit of damage there with the cavalry. Yeah, those uh, musket musketeers never got in a square. No, they did not. And I'm, I'd wager that that is because of that Brandenburg Ulan charge, which was uh, into the Russian Jaegers. I think he was microing that and didn't notice these crossier coming out of the trees. Right. But now they are being shot by a musketeer unit. Uh, and held up by a Lancer unit at the same time, so they're going to start losing some numbers there. I think they probably will be able to make it through these Lancers, though. Though, the Lutzau's Free Corps and a Huzar unit have cleaned up the rest of the Opel Sheni in the center. And these Russian cavalry actually broke through that Lancer, although this Musketeer unit is going to make it into square. So at this point, I'd really like to see Russia falling back and uh, grouping up to try to put up a proper defense. Yeah, I mean, they just routed two full units of musketeers. And uh, granted, now that cavalry is gone as well. But, you know, that could have been something that had it been supported would have made some headway. Yeah. Uh, it made up for the loss of their two full units in this building and the musketeers are a better unit than the opel Shenny that they lost yeah and it looks like the russian uh, the prussian artillery is silent for the moment i think it that has more to do with the uh line of sight issues at the moment but i think had they had their full force based on how like evenly traded the units were here you know some prussian cav died some russian cavalry died i don't know being farther grouped together would have definitely been helpful. And now those Russian Jaegers are shooting almost exclusively into the hillside. 
Yeah, so so are the uh, Prussian Fusilier, though. Yeah. So that one unit there getting finally routed from the flank, and uh, yeah, those two Prussian Fusilier on the flank getting hit hard, and this is the view from the Russian front. And the artillery is live once again up on that hilltop. Yeah, and I'll I'll bet you they're gonna target. Oh my God! <laughs> there went that guy. Look, that threw him like 15 feet. So yeah, they are very much targeting these Russian Jaegers. And uh, this one unit of musketeers here has charged forward. And look at the amount of losses they took in a single volley, charging against that full line. And now incoming artillery rounds knocking down some of them as well it looks like that guy's gonna manage to get back up but that unit has now routed and uh, this other musketeer unit is gonna go here soon it looks like they're being shot at on the flank by another musketeer unit so musketeers going head to head and uh, those Prussian Hussars that got a nice flank charge into the Russian line are now pursuing those routed units through the yeah, trees there. They probably just want to make sure they don't come back. It looks like this musketeer unit is getting ready to charge here. And the Prussian musketeer unit has went into a square formation. It's uh, highly effective against the infantry cavalry, not to be mistaken with the cavalry cavalry. And yeah, now we've got this, uh, these Hussars are coming back in. And, and that they should are clean up the, the uh, Russian line there pretty easily. Yeah, they definitely did the rear charge there, routing them. These last few men being cut to pieces by the musketeers and the cavalry. So uh, that pretty much, I think that solidifies this engagement, at least on this flank very uh, sporadic and spread out but there is a stray unit of opal shiny that appears to have come back from routing and they're uh they're in the woods there i don't think they're gonna be able to accomplish much oh yeah there they come come out of the woods uh 75 of them getting a few shots into this who's our unit you know they might take down that single who's our unit they at least It'd brought nice it down to some numbers And I don't think Prussia actually realizes that these guys are here. Now oh, they now do. They there have. comes the charge. And that's going to route those Oposheni. So at this point, yeah, the right wing of the Russian line is gone. They've lost several units. And uh, Russia has lost a cavalry unit, from what I could count, and two musketeers. So on the mini-map here, you can see the full Russian line now moving down off the hill as well as on my screen. And uh, they are starting to progress towards, if we look all the way across the map, I believe these are routing troops here. Yeah, they are. Uh, on this hillside, there is a Russian defense. So what's left of the Russian army? Three Russian Jaeger units, a Moscow musketeer, another musketeer units, and then I believe the two lifeguard foot and that six pounder horse artillery and the general staff of course but they've got a decent position here and, and uh, there are a couple stray units of cavalry in the backfield oh yes reminiscent of the uh, spanish guerrilla cavalry there they are crossier and dragoons and they're running about back here um but yeah, this looks like this is where Russia has decided that they are going to defend at this point. They they gave up with their efforts. I think they could have made a much stronger push by actually having their army together. Now they've got a much larger Prussian force uh, heading towards them. But we'll see how that plays out. They're firing artillery at these Prussian Fusilier. But anyways, at this point in time... That was an excellent artillery shot. Just show yeah. that. But uh, at this point in time, basically what's going to happen, Prussia is going to take their time marching over here. They are taking fire from this horse artillery, but it's not going to do that much damage at this range. You can see here, all of those guys managed to actually get back up from that. Uh, these Prussian Fusilier are going to take a few losses from artillery. But yeah, they're going to take their time and march forward this way 
and they are going to send off some cavalry to deal with uh, the, the Russian cavalry, which is going to keep moving far around behind them. And other than that, we will be back when the final engagement comes, because at this point we've got like a 20 minute gap before any more combat takes place. Yeah, there's a lot of slow movement of the Prussian army, really positioning itself quite well against the Russian defense. Yeah, so is there any other comments on the first part of that match that you would like to make before we uh, cut to the, the final climactic fight? I would love to hear BP-97's explanation for that initial deployment, which was so strange. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know what his plan was there. Uh, granted, he did lose two Opel Shenny units immediately, and those were those were really weak units on the far right. So he almost might have been trying to use them to to you know he might have been willing to lose them and uh, bait Prush off the hill to come attack him over here because he was far more willing to bring some of his troops over this way than bring these guys over towards that hill. So. That's true. Pr attacking the Prussian defense on that on the uh, even greater hill across the map would have been likely devastating. Yeah, so that, I mean, and again, that's all just speculation. That might have possibly been a, uh, a reason, but as to what the actual reason was, I'm not so sure. Anyways, we will be back as more of these <laughs> Prussian Fuselier continue to be thrown by artillery one or two guys going down each time so in this slow advance they are going to take some losses and at the same time we are going to get this uh, final cavalry fight in the back corner and that uh, Russian cav is probably in trouble with the Lutzow's free corps coming in now yeah and they've, they've already been depleted a little bit in the fight plus they've got a musketeer unit coming over as well so that's going to be it for now, guys. We will see you in a little bit once the uh, full engagement begins. Okay, guys, we are back now, and the engagement has just opened up. Uh, Prussia has moved across the field, and we've got a skirmish going on now being pushed by some musketeer units on the left of the Prussian line. And uh, know that the... Uh the Prussian army does have the skirmishing advantage here with their three units of skirmishers to the Russian too. Yeah, uh, although the one thing benefiting Russia, or I guess in this case hurting both armies, they're both trading fire. If you look at this, from this unit's perspective, you can't really see the Russian troops. Um, a few of them on this flank are dying, but notice how in the middle here there's basically no bodies. And that is because line of sight is an issue here, so it is allowing Russia to last a little bit longer. As this one flank is getting repeatedly picked off, but uh, it looks like Russia is extending the lines to their own right to try to counter these musketeers. And they've done some solid damage to one of the units. Yeah, Prussia's falling back, they're recognizing that move. Yeah, and I think it's because the skirmishers along with the lifeguard foot, a fresh lifeguard foot, uh, will defeat that musketeer unit, so they're going to get them out of there before that happens. And on the, the Russian left, everything is quiet. Artillery is firing over at the Prussian artillery, which has just set up on this hill uh, far off from the Russian left. And that is, that is quite a distance. I'd be surprised to see the solid shot hit any of these artillery. Yeah, I also think the hill is between the artillery pieces uh, very barely. So really that solid shot is mostly going to be firing at this lifeguard of foot. And they should be opening up here soon. But anyways, we'll go to the overhead of the full battle again. And you can see at this point it's... It's fairly uh, slow going. It looks like that, what was, what was that, the Russian Jaeger? Yeah, they finally routed. Uh, I was wrong. One of the Russian artillerymen just took a solid shot in the chest. You'll know the oh. second gun, the center gun that's actually firing, has a dead man <laughs> next to it. There he is, yeah. 
Okay, so artillery duel is a thing. Um, and what's this? We've got a musketeer, a Prussian musketeer unit moving around in front of their own artillery, uh, getting ready to march up this hill on the far left of Prussia. Uh, or Russia, that is. And Russia has a lifeguard afoot here, still fully manned. Just across from them are two foot guard units, so that'll be an interesting fight. I would like to see the uh, Prussian general get moved up for the morale bonuses. Yeah, I think he's right now far back. he's protecting him from stray fire. Uh, Which I suppose makes sense, but I would... As, as much as there is terrain which could be used to defend the general, I would like to see him farther up. Yeah. And at this point, uh, the skirmishing advantage of Prussia really playing in, it looks like they managed to take out a musketeer unit in the trees, seriously damaged this Moscow musketeer. They've taken out the Jaegers, and uh, yeah, that musketeer in the tree now is down to 45 men. They fell back a little bit. We've still got a Russian Jaeger moving through this tiny little group of buildings, though. Yeah, they well. were actually in the house there for a moment. Yeah, and that lifeguard of foot now taking some shots at the Prussian Fusilier. And uh, the Russian musketeers are extending farther to their own left to try to get around this while taking some fire from the Russian Jaegers. It is cool to see that more or less all of Russia's like elite units are now set up in a very strong position on this hillside. Yeah, they just got some good shots on this musketeer unit. Uh, now that lifeguard afoot on the Russian right is starting to suffer from the range of the Prussian Fusilier. You can see some of these guys getting picked off here. Dropping. As they are shot at by a uh, much larger number of Prussian Fusilier. And it looks like there's a duel going on between the, the lifeguards and the foot guards, though. I feel like this is completely a fruitless effort because uh, I'm pretty sure 100% of the shots from all of these units is hitting directly into the hillside. So, yeah, it, it yeah. is. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not going well for the anybody. The very left, like, three or four men on this foot guard unit actually have line of sight with the, the Russian lifeguards and you know what it seems one prussian man has actually died on that left side <laughs> yeah and there are artillery fire uh still coming in but now that other foot guard unit is pushing up in the center and it looks like they are going to be in good range to do a volley on this horse artillery so we will watch that from the view of the horse artillery and uh see if any damage is done here. I think they are, in fact, in range. See and, uh, as up. much as I'd like to see the Prussian horse artillery move up in response now that it's safer, there's not really anywhere that it could move to. Yeah. And Potentially, that... if they push Russia off the hilltop, they could set up there and get excellent shots down the, pro down the Russian line, though. Yeah, and that volley took out two guns from the... Uh horse artillery and there goes the last one every single last one of those guys dead um, this lifeguard of foot has decided its best option is to do a melee charge and it hit this musketeer and just shredded them on the charge and that got backed up by the Russian general staff um, at this point the last Russian units over here this lifeguard of foot has retreated to this building and this musketeer unit is getting shot up in a charge and now they are routing under a charge from the Pus Prussian Fuselier. Although the Russian general is now moving on the Prussian artillery. Is it? Oh, there he goes. And let's see if we see some canister shot. I would bet that's what he'd use at that range. Oh, yep. there it was. And there it was. That's going to take out... Kill Almost the general all. there. Yeah. So that's the end of the Russian general. Uh, this Russian lifeguard of foot managed to make it through the musketeer unit and into this other foot guard, but they are now going to rout. So all that is left is this Moscow musketeers, which just won in melee in the trees with a musketeer unit of Prussia. But uh, this is this is looking grim for Russia. I can't see them pulling out of this. Yep, and they yeah, routed. They have, they have nothing left. And uh, those those lifeguard of foot 
decided they just wanted to leave this battle. And who can blame them? Yeah, at that point, not much left going for him. So, there's the statistics. H. Sanbul with a win there, playing as Prussia. Uh, you will see him in the finals. And the finals are going to be best two out of three. And next up is, uh, I believe it's Elite Units of America versus Johannes VB. The rematch there for the semi-final round. The salty and, run back. And that battle is quite an interesting one uh you guys are really gonna enjoy that but anyways h sambul with 1113 kills here to bp 97's 682 and both deployed uh, roughly the same amount as far as units go so good game to both players and we will see h sambul in the finals against either elite units of america or johannes vb so see you then yeah, any any last comments on this battle, or I think we covered everything? Uh, some interesting strategies employed on both sides. I think I think a lot can be learned by both players. There were some really interesting moves that were made. Yeah, I and, think uh, uh, both players had some moments where watching out for cavalry charges. R Russia's cavalry was actually very productive. Yeah. Um, but other than that in a 1v1 situation it's probably beneficial to keep your your army together we've seen that a few times yeah. uh, the last battle for the the round two match against elite units of america and uh johannes and if you guys are wondering why they're playing twice you have to watch that video it's all explained um but anyways like johannes there he he ended up losing and a big part of that definitely had to do with the fact that uh, his army was so spread out. Yeah. So, it's definitely something to keep in mind. Anyways. And, uh, hopefully H. Sambo will actually will uh, continue to employ his strategy of keeping together. And, yeah, we'll uh, see. We'll see how that works. Yeah. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this one and keep an eye out for the next match soon. See you guys later. Have a good one.